I'm going to bring in retired U.S. Army Major John Spencer. He is an expert in urban warfare and author of Connected Soldiers, Life, Leadership, and Social Connections in Modern War. Major, how are not just the civilians, but the Ukrainian soldiers going to get out of that steel plant alive? How is this going to end? Yeah, so Anna, it's going to be hard to get them out, to be honest, to be, to be brutally honest. Um, they've already inspired a generation of Ukrainians, and I think that will um, come. But make no mistake, I've studied underground warfare for decades, been in tunnels in northern Israel, in Korea. The Russians don't have the capability to enter those tunnels. So this isn't ending soon. Um, it is a humanitarian crisis, but it's also a big thorn in Putin's side. He wants this to end quickly to have something to celebrate. And, and I, I honestly don't think it will. Uh, at last check, our reporting as of late yesterday was that Russians had some 2,000 soldiers there in Mariupol specifically. And obviously the folks that are fighting right now is at this steel plant. Why don't they have the capability, the Russians, you said, to enter those tunnels where at least those who are still fighting hard are holding out? Right. So this, is a, this isn't just a normal tunnel. This is a deep tunnel complex that you have to have special equipment, as in to be able to see, talk, navigate underground. Even to fire your weapon will blow your eardrums if you fire your weapon underground. And so we have to have what we call dual ear protection. They just don't have the training, the equipment, or, or the, the will to enter that. I mean, urban warfare is hell, but underground warfare is literally symbolic to fighting in hell. And, and they would lose thousands of soldiers, which, interestingly, they no longer have in Mariupol. They used to have you know, 15,000. They needed those to try to do what they're doing in the north. They, they just don't have it on it. Ukrainian officials say recent Russian attacks have had no success in the Luhansk and the Donetsk regions. And a reminder, these are areas where Russia had more resources and manpower to begin with. So how do you think the Ukrainians have been able to hold them back? Well, I mean, since the beginning, we've, the Ukrainians have shown that the will to fight is more as important as your numbers on paper. Um, the Ukrainians in this area, in Donbass, have been there for over eight years. Those are well-prepared defenses and some of the best Ukrainian units in the Ukrainian army. But they also have this, this thing called intelligence, which is a game changer in any war in centuries. Knowing what the Russians want to do, either in the east or trying to come down and encircle those units from above, which that battle, that battle we're seeing in Kharkiv and Izium will become second only to the successful defeat of Russians in taking Kiev. I want to ask you a follow-up on the intel because we're reporting that U.S. is sharing intelligence with Ukrainian forces, and that involves Russia force movements and locations, as well as intercepted communications about their military plans. And we're learning they're sharing that information within 30 minutes to an hour of the U.S. receiving that intel. Is it noticeable to you in terms of how Ukraine is operating on the battlefield? Absolutely. It's been noticeable since day, since we publicly acknowledge that we were, the U.S. was providing intelligence to them. Um, Russia lost the element of surprise, which is critical in any war, in any battle. So they can't move without somebody knowing, whether that's Ukrainian intelligence or the support that we're giving them. And that's the key to their attempted movements, is to try to surprise with massive formations, with officers, which create their weaknesses of needing officers on the battlefield. So it makes them extremely vulnerable. So that real-time intelligence from a wide variety of sources is the the linchpin to the Ukrainian success, along with this new weaponry. Major John Spencer, I always appreciate hearing your thoughts, given your expertise and your insights. Thank you very much for joining us.